today. This section is on 5-6, writing polynomials, pretty similar to 5-5. That's why I usually combine sections, but since we are not at school, we will use two separate sections. All right, um, you're doing page 229, 1 through 37-odd. You should have this done by 117. The objective of today's lesson and purpose is to write polynomials in descending order and to evaluate polynomials. So we've already talked about writing polynomials in descending order. That means going from the highest exponent to the lo lowest exponent. We also call that standard form. So in this case, we would take negative 3x to the fifth power because we take the term with the highest exponent, so we take the whole term, write it first. The next one would be positive 4x, sorry, positive 4x to the fourth power. The next one would be positive 5x to the third power, then positive x squared, and negative 9. Sorry, whoops, I skipped negative x because that is x to the first power, and negative 9 is really like x to the 0 power. Pause the recording and try the next one on your own. Now check your work. We start with y to the fifth, then positive y to the third, negative 8y squared, negative 3y, positive 4, and we are done. So that's putting it in descending order. So state whether the polynomial is written in ascending order. That means going from lowest to highest, descending order, or neither. Take a minute, pause the recording, and write a word down, one of those three choices down next to each polynomial. Now check your work. Since it goes from the second to the first to the zero power, it would be in descending order. The next one starts with the constant term, which is really zero power, then the third term, third power, fourth power, seventh power, so it's in ascending order, ascending. The last one goes from the zero power to the second power to the first power to the third power to the fifth power, so that is neither. All right, combine like terms and arrange in descending order. We're doing the same thing we were doing before, but my suggestion is to just do it all in one step. The PowerPoint does it in two steps. They put it in, they combine like terms in one step and then descending order in the second. I would do it all at once. So I'll show you once here. Um, our biggest term is to the third power. So we're gonna take seven P to the third. I'm gonna just do it in one step. Negative three P to the third and positive seven P make 4p, positive 4p to the third power. Now I'll go to the second power. We've got positive p squared and 5p squared. That makes plus 6p squared. Now I'm left with negative 4p, negative 2p. That makes negative 6p. And the last term is our constant term with no variable because that would be p to the 0 power times 1, and there we go. You'll see that my PowerPoint does this in two steps. They combine like terms first, and then they put it in descending order. So whatever is easiest for you is fine for you to do. Pause the recording. Oh, actually the next one is... Um, They have to tell you, when you have more than one variable, they have to tell you in order of what variables. They want it in descending order of variable P. So I'm really just looking, this is the second term, this is the third, this is the fourth, here's the third, and here's the first. So we're going to go with 4P to the fourth power. And then I'm going to combine 3NP minus NP to the third. So that makes plus 2NP to the third. I'm combining and I'm combining. Notice okay, 
notice that we're writing the 4p to the 4th. Now, for it to be a like term, the variable n to the 1st, p to the 3rd, has to be the same n to the 1st, p to the 3rd right here. So since it's n to the 1st, p to the 3rd, and n to the 1st, p to the 3rd, these are considered like terms. So I'm so I have three n to the first p to the third minus one n to the first p to the third, and that makes uh, positive two n to the first p to the third. Okay. Next one we're going to p to the second. There is only one, so I'm going to do plus n to the third p to the second. It's positive. And I've got 2 negative 2NP two and negative 6MB. That makes negative 8NP. And I've already done this one, and we are done. If you want to do it the other way, And then we can combine, we can put them in order of the P's last. Oops. All right. Moving on. The next section in your homework will be to evaluate. To evaluate is to find the value. So basically what we do is we substitute in. Um, A is, D is 5. And a is 2 to the 4th, so 5 minus 2 to the 4th is 16. And that makes 5 minus 16 is negative 11. Okay, number 2. a squared is 2 squared, and b squared is 3 squared. So that's 4 minus 9. Now pause the recording and try the rest on your own. Now check your work. So c squared would be 4 squared plus 2 squared. That's 16 plus 4 is 20. b squared is 3, 3 squared. a, c, d. It's 2 times 4 times 5, so it's 9 plus 40 is 49. The quantity of AB is 6 squared, which is 36 plus 20, minus 25. It's 11. And then the last one, check your work. All right, here's where it starts to get tricky. We're squaring um, negatives, and we have to look at what is the base of the negative. This is just a little bit more practice. Pause the recording and see if you can simplify these correctly. Now check your work. Three, the base of the first one's exponent, two, would be just the three. So it's negative, this really means negative three times three and that would be negative nine. Whereas when I square the entire thing, now the, the negative is squared as well, so that would be positive nine, since negative times negative makes positive. The next one would be negative times negative times negative, two times two times two, so it would be negative eight. The next one would be negative two times two times two, which makes negative eight. Negative 2 times 9, it's negative 18. In this case, it will simplify to negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. First one we'll get will be negative 9 times 2 is 18. Because remember, when I'm squaring the 3, I'm only squaring the 3, not the negative, because it's not in parentheses. And then the last one will be 2 times 9, 
which is 18. All right, now we're putting it all together. We're adding a negative in, and we are substituting. Uh, we're adding a negative, and we're evaluating. So step one, we have to substitute. Now in this case, the whole of x is negative 3. We're squaring that, so that makes 9. In this case, I've got here this, remember the whole of x is negative 3. I square negative 3, I've got a negative, then I've got negative 3 times negative 3, so that ends up being negative 9, because there's three negatives. The next one will be negative 3 to the third power, to the, yeah, to the third power, minus negative 3 squared. So that's negative 29 minus 18. That make negative, sorry, I meant to say 27. Um, negative 36. Actually, we could have done this as negative 3. No, we couldn't have. Um, so negative 27, 37, and 8 is negative 45. I was about to say we could have done negative 3 to the 5th power, but we can't. We have to, because um, each value is definitely different. You couldn't have done that. Next one is going to look something like this. Oh, I went to 36, sorry. I don't know what I was doing to 19. The next one would be 2 times negative 3 squared times ne plus negative 3. So we're using order of operations. We square the negative not 3. I get positive 9. 2 times 9 minus 3 is... 2 times 9 minus 3 is... 18 minus 3 is 15. And now I've got negative 3 cubed is negative 27 plus 9. Plus 3, sorry. Keep squaring that. And so we end up with 20, negative 24. Next one, we'll have negative 3 cubed plus negative 3 squared minus 3. And that simplifies to negative 21. Pause the recording and try the next six on your own. Now check your work. Now, Check your answers. Number 1 is negative 1. Number 2 is 10. Number 3 is 15. Number 4 is 2. Number 5 is negative 12. Number seven, 6 is 7. And that is our lesson for 5-6.